So it's 97 out. It's very dry because I'm in Arizona and this thing, it cannot keep up. It cannot keep up. Um, and I'm, I'm super bummed out. This Zero Breeze Mark II cannot keep up with the Arizona heat. Hey y'all, welcome back to Adventuring with Amanda. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. Here is the long awaited review of the Zero Breeze Mark II air conditioning unit um, for camping, RVs, uh, tents, and the like. So as you saw in my opener, um, this isn't gonna work for me you guys this isn't gonna work for me and I really want to delve deep into who I think it will work for and why and why I am NOT recommending it so I'm just gonna jump right in and start by saying a lot of people reached out to me because I have been on Bob Wells YouTube channel cheap RV living with him um, our interview was published in December um, so a lot of people have asked me, Amanda, Bob Wells gave the Zero Breeze Mark II a bad review. What are your thoughts? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> I watched Bob's review, and at first I was really disappointed because I was like, man, Bob literally said he wouldn't recommend this to anybody. I unfortunately agree with him on most on most things um, and I'm sad to say that but I mean Bob is super trustworthy and I have so much respect for him and he's really smart and he's he's right on his point so if you haven't watched his video go ahead and do so now I will say that I went through the components of this unit and things um, on my unboxing video which I did live so be sure to check that out uh, if you want to see all of the components and me unboxing it at first I was super excited about this unit. I was so stoked. It looks super sleek and I really liked the design at first, but um, it can't keep up with the Arizona heat. It just cannot. And we're not even in peak summer yet. Um, I was literally testing this in the morning time when it was 97 degrees and it, can, it can't keep up with the heat. Um, it literally at some point started blowing like 80 degree air because it was just struggling to keep up. So one thing that Bob said in his review was that because he is in an ambulance, this didn't cool the whole space. And the only way he was getting cool was with the hose attachment on the front blowing on him. I had, I was more optimistic because I'm in a minivan. So I was like, oh, you know, at the price point, this should be able to cool my minivan with no problems. Um, no, big problem because it doesn't cool my minivan at all. Um, even being shaded, it just, it just, it's, it's not performing. It's not performing. So the the ratio of size, especially with the hoses, because you have to have the hoses on the back for it to really be uh, effective. The size compared to the cost. Um, compared to the airflow, it's just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. I mean, the unit alone is $1,000 and you add, you know, the portable battery on the bottom and that's an extra 600. Then you add the 12 volt adapter, which I need to run it in my minivan for power and that's another $100. It's not worth it. It's not worth the cost. Um, now, it's really dry here, like I said, and I mean, I do live in the desert. It's very hot, but this is where I live. So, you know, it might work in a more moderate, more temperate climate, but it doesn't work here and, and in Arizona, and this is where I live. So, um, I'm really disappointed. I'm really disappointed. The, it's supposed to blow out air that's 30 degrees cooler than what it is outside. And that was not the case in my minivan. Um, I tried to position it a few different ways, move the hoses a few different ways. I even put it on the floor with the hoses outside my um, side door, my main door, and it was still uh, very ineffective. Um, and I'm just, I'm super bummed out. I'm super bummed out. So, 
with all that being said, I don't even have the power for it. You need so much power to charge the battery on this thing. It's like 250 watts it pulls just to charge it. And then the battery only lasts six hours. So you're not even getting a full night or like a full, you know, day that you're awake out of the battery. So in order for it to work for me, I would have to charge the battery with my 12 volt adapter while I'm driving in order for me to be, be able to even run this. So none of it makes sense. None of it makes sense to me. And um, even with my Blue Eddy 800, it's just not enough. So you have to have a ton of power. You have to be in a much cooler climate than Arizona. And you have to have a ton of space. Um, yeah, I'm so bummed out. But, 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 you know, Bob said he wouldn't recommend this for anybody. I think there are very few situations that it might be effective. For example, um, since it is so portable, and I really do appreciate the portability of it, um, you could use it, like, I plan to use it. I'm, I'm, Bob said he's going to get rid of his. I'm going to keep mine. A, because I do have a home base that I can store it in, otherwise forget it, I wouldn't keep it. Um, and B, there are a couple situations that I can think about using it. Um, for example, like when I go to camp at NASCAR at Phoenix Raceway in November with my friends, I can put this underneath my awning to kind of give us all a little cool breeze. Um, same thing like when I go out to Quartzsite because that's you know nice and close to my home base. But lugging this big thing around with all of the components that I have in a huge canvas bag, which I was putting in my rooftop box, so that's fine. Um, it's just not worth it. So you need the space um, and you need the power. <laughs> so I also think that it would actually be good for tent campers as well if you're just like a weekend tent camper. I think this would actually be pretty effective in a tent. Um, but again, it needs to be cooler than Arizona heat because it just can't keep up with the heat. Um, I also think uh, it would be great for anybody with a ton of expendable income that, you know, would like it for like sitting outside in the summer or like, you know, I might use it when it's, you know, 85 degrees and I want to sit outside in my garage but it's not cool enough so I blow this on me. Maybe it would be good for that. But for van lifers and people limited on space and people in the Arizona desert, this is not gonna do the trick for you. I really wanted to travel with it over my six week period this summer to see how it performs in other climates. But based on what I've experienced here in Arizona using it, it's not even worth it for me to attempt to bring it on the road. I'm going to be better off with my fans, shade camping and cooling blankets. Um, to be honest with you, I think also a more effective solution would be like a little mini swamp cooler or even a window unit you can buy at Home Depot for 500 bucks. Um, I will also say that I really appreciated the company, the employees, the company, they're so kind and they're so friendly and so it really is a great company. I just feel like there's a lot of fine tuning that needs to be done with this unit and it would work a lot better for me if it was more of a vertical model. Um, because like I said, this is huge and it takes up a lot of space. Overall, um, I think that it's it would be okay for very niche, very specific situations, but I'm not going to recommend it uh, for van life, especially seeing that it can't even cool my minivan, and that's a pretty small space. So, um, you'll see the footage on this video, of course, just a little bit of it. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I think I think that's going to be it. So I'm bummed out and I know that you guys are probably bummed out too because I was really hoping to give this an absolutely fantastic review. But I'm here to give honest reviews and this is my honest review of it. <sighs> Zero Breeze. I was excited about you, but it's not going to work out. And trust me, it was you, not me. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and supporting me. I appreciate you, um, and I, I hope that this was helpful to you. Save your money. Try something else. We'll see you guys next time. You know, I watched um, Bob Wells' video, and I was really disappointed because he gave it kind of, you know, a, a, 
an unfortunate review, but unfortunately he's right. I had a little more hope. I hoped that this would be able to cool my minivan because I am in um, such a small space. But that's that's going to be a no. Um, I have the the battery pack. It's it's sitting on, and unless yeah, this is I can't even like I can't even sit in here. It's still it's just too hot. I even had the air conditioning going on in my van, like my actual van air conditioning, to try and kind of cool the van down and then get this set up to kind of give it a head start. It still wasn't good enough, and it just keeps blowing out warmer and warmer air. So, um, gosh, I'm super bummed out. I had really high expectations for this, um, but it is, it is not worth the money. Now, I do feel like if maybe you have some like expendable income and you're like a tent camper, like a weekend warrior, and you just need like some temporary air or something, um, maybe if, I don't know, look at, uh, the temperature keeps going up because it's just too hot out. It just, it literally can't keep up. I had sex, such uh, high expectations, like I said, because this unit, you know, is starts at $1,000. That's without the battery pack. So I was like, oh, it has to work. It has to be effective. But it's just not that. It's just not. And it's, it's, I'm disappointed because I, I like the initial design and I, um, the battery pack and stuff, I think that's neat, but it takes up considerable space, as you can see. Um, and that would be fine if it was keeping me cool, but I'm absolutely sweating. I am dying of heat right now. Um, so, yeah. Ugh, I'm so sad, you guys. I'm, I really am. This sucks.